first I'd like to start off with a question. Who here has ever struggled or worried about something? <laughs> All of us. <laughs> Perfect. Now how much time did that take up? How much of your time did you take up just worrying about that problem? Too much. Exactly. Too much. Too much time. We as humans, we love to worry about stuff. It is our favorite thing to do. We like to just think, oh gosh, what am I going to eat for dinner tonight? <laughs> and God gives us a very specific viewpoint on worry. And that's what we see here in Matthew 6, 25 through 30. And I feel that Jesus right here just gives us four specific points on worry, on what he tells us, what he thinks about worry. First point, life is more than food and clothing. Um, number two, you are more valuable to God than any of his creations on this earth. Number three, worry will kill you. <laughs> and number four, God will always provide. So looking at point number one, that life is more than food and clothes, this holds so true to our life. Because in John 6.35, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. If you are hungry, come to me and I will satisfy your hunger. Yeah. Life is more than food. Yeah. We are called to have a hunger for the Lord and for everything that He is. Mm -hmm. And the body is more than clothes. Yeah. 1 Corinthians 6.19 Don't you know that your bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Praise Jesus. I mean, that verse right there. <laughs> our body is definitely more than clothes. Yeah. That verse, literally... Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And Paul, Paul is the perfect example of someone who did not worry about what he had to eat the next day or about what clothes he was going to wear. He was a missionary. He just went all over preaching the word of the Lord, not caring about if he got thrown into prison. Homeboy was thrown into prison numerous times. And he sung crazy while in prison. Yeah. He knew that life was more than food, yeah. and the body was more than clothes. So since we are called to live for more than just food and clothes, we know that we do not need to worry about it. And since we know that we are called to this higher standard, we know that we are of great value to God. Which is point number two, that we are more valuable than any of His creations here on this earth. We see that you know God feeds the birds of the air, but we also see in other parts of Scripture that God's eye is on the sparrow. Yeah. Now the sparrow is probably only about this big. I mean, it's a tiny little bird, and God feeds that little bird. He obviously has great value on the bird if he cares enough to feed it day in and day out, and that bird doesn't have to worry about anything. Mm -hmm. Now we have the breath of God in our lungs. We see in Genesis, that God said that He breathed the breath of life into man. Do we ever see that He says He breathed the breath of life into a bird? <laughs> Not really. It's just kind of like, boom, it's created. <laughs> Here you go. We have the breath of life. And then we also have something that was more precious to God than anything. And that was His Son. And this is how we know we are of great value because of John 3.16. The most widely known verse among Christians and non-believers. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. God's only Son was sent to this earth to die for us despite our mistakes, despite what we did, despite where we were going in the end, God already knew all of us before He even sent His Son, before He even created this world. And yet He still sends His only Son. And I don't know how many of you in this room are parents, but for those of you who are, it would probably be hard for you to give up one of your only children to someone who you know is going to mess up. To someone who you know may not even accept you in the end. That just blows my mind because he just loved us so much and cared about us so much that he gave his only son so that we can spend eternity 
with him. And that is how we know we are of great value. And if we still worry about stuff, even knowing that we are of value and that God will clothe us and feed us, we've got a big problem. And that's what we see in verse 27. Worry will kill you. Worry does nothing for you except take up your time. And what happens is, when you just continuously worry, you're going to start distressing people, and so you'll start getting angry, depressed, and eventually, as a Christian, you'll start distressing God. And let me tell you, that is a very, very dangerous place to be in. Because when you start distrusting God, you will start to turn away. You will start to backslide and completely go the other direction from where God has planned for you. So it is important that we give our problems to God. Because it will affect us in the end. And me personally, I had a problem with worry. Originally, I wasn't going to be going to Sagu. I was My original plan was to be an Air Force pilot. And to get a full scholarship from the Air Force, I needed a 26 on my ACT. I took that test three times. I got a 23, a 25, and a 25. After that third time, I started asking God, why? I thought this was your plan for me. I thought this is where you wanted me to be. And so I started worrying that I was going to be stuck in that small town for the rest of my life. <laughs> but God got a hold of me. And he said, you know what, I have a plan for you. Yeah. Yeah. And that plan was for me, as of right now, to be a youth pastor later on in life. Mm -hmm. For me to come to Sagu. Yeah. And it has transformed my life, knowing that God will always provide for me. Yeah. And so when we start trusting God with our problems, God will come in in a clutch way and provide for us. And when I say clutch, I mean He's going to come in at the most critical point when it matters the most, when your life is on the line, when your future is on the line. He's going to come in and He's just going to put it all on the line for you and provide for you exactly what you need. So, you know, we just see God's provision throughout these verses. He provides for the birds of the air. He provides, he clothes the grass of the field. And he says that Solomon, who is one of the richest men in history, wasn't even clothed like a flower in the field. <laughs> Unbelievable that God provided so much for Solomon and said that he wasn't even clothed like something that we trample on every day. So God will consistently provide for you as long as you have faith. And that is the key to this whole passage, is faith. Because without faith, it's nothing. If you don't have faith that God will provide for you, it's going to be worth absolutely nothing. So we must have faith that God will provide, or all we're going to end up doing is just going right back around and worrying about our problems. And so, as I'm bringing this to a close, I want you all to think about something right now in your life that you're worrying about. Because we all worry about stuff in life. So I just want you to think about something right now that you're worrying about. And as you get that into your mind, I just want to bring back the four points. First, life is more than food and clothes. Second, you are more valuable to God than any of His creations. Three, worry will kill you. And four, God will always provide. So knowing those, what I want you to take away is that you, we need to start giving our worries to God. No matter what we're going through, no matter what trial, what hardship, what problems, what doubts we have, we just need to start giving them to Christ. And it doesn't have to be all at once either. It can be little bit by little bit by little bit. Because when we try to give it all at once, sometimes we're just going to get ourselves burnt out. And we're going to want to give up and go right back to worrying because it was easier. So that's why we need to just give it a little bit by a little bit. Because eventually what's going to happen is you're going to be all there. It's going to all be eventually given to God. And then eventually, once you get used to that, you're going to be able to just start giving everything to God. Your life, your direction, your children, your future, everything to God. 
So overall, I just want to, I just want to leave this to you. Do not worry. God will always have your back. God will provide as long as you have faith. And I'd just like to close in prayer. Lord, I just thank you, Lord Jesus, for the opportunity that you've given me, Lord, to just share this message with your children today, God. I just pray, Lord, that we be able to just take this, Lord, and put it into our lives and put it into effect and not just let it rain out. I just pray also, Lord, that you just keep us safe as we travel home today. In your name, amen. Amen. amen.